On today's show, we answer your questions on the Mavs offseason. If Nico Harrison had to sit down one-on-one -on -one and pitch Luka Doncic on how they're going to win a championship in the future, how would he do it? We'll answer that and more on today's Locked On Mavs. I'm Luka Doncic, and this is Locked On Mavericks. Welcome to Mavericks! don't believe you shouldn't be here. Loyalty never fades away. And welcome. You are locked on to the Dallas Mavericks. My name is Nick Engstead, media member and NBA channel manager for the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for being part of the show and making Locked On Mavs your first listen each and every day. We appreciate each and every one of you. Subscribe or follow wherever you get your podcast. Just search Locked On Mavs. Be a Raccoon Squad member. Be an everydayer and listen every day. We're the best way you can help us grow the show. Listen every day and to comment anything below. Let us know in the YouTube comments below. What's the first thing you'd say to Nico to uh, Luka Doncic if you're Nico Harrison? You're pitching him on, all right, this is how we mm. win a championship. Let us know. The future. Today's episode is brought to you by Bird Dogs. Go to birddogs.com slash LockdownNBA when you enter the promo code LockdownNBA. They'll throw in a free custom Bird Dogs Yeti-style tumbler. It's quality. It's a good tumbler. That's good. I don't have it with me. It's downstairs. Uh, so go to uh, check out Bird Dogs. And also, if you want to help support the show, text us. Get text alerts from us. Participate in mailbags like this one. Subscribe to our subtext. It helps support the show. Keeps us five days a week. We appreciate each and every one of you on there. We're uh, barreling our way to uh, 100. I think that's our first goal. Get Let's get to 100 subs. That's our first That's our first goal there. Appreciate each and every one of you on there. Joining me, as always, my co-host, writer, contributor at Mavs.com. The male man, the one more thing, King, what you got for me, Isaac Harris? Well, we just watched the Lakers uh, lose game two, so that's a uh, good day. Good day. Uh, <laughs> actually, let's let's start off the top with a, a fun question we got today in the subtext. Okay. I guess it's kind of fun. It's like non-basketball. When you get a new shirt in the mail. <laughs> In the mail, did you have this one written down? <laughs> no, I, but I was gonna, I had it okay. marked. We, we got texted this today. If when you get a new shirt in the mail or yeah. you like buy it somewhere, do you immediately wear it or do you wash it first before you wear it? Um, shirts you wash it right, unless, it, unless it's like a dress shirt and you're wearing it over top and you just have to get to something quick like the next day or something. You buy yeah. a button up and you're like, all right, if, if you're wearing it over the top of something else, if it's touching your skin. Yes. Shorts though, like Why the bird, like my bird dog shorts that they sent, I put them on right away. <laughs> like, I didn't even wash them. Shirts. Absolutely though. Can I zag and say no? Like you can, oh, you, what it's whatever you do. It's not zagging. It's just, are you going to think do. I'm like gross if I, do, if I don't wash it before though? Not I'm necessarily. down to just throw it on. That's fine. Yeah. I'm down to wear it. There you go. Unless it's you, unless it's you, something for the kids. Like we always wash it for the kids because that, that stuff gets weird. But yeah, true. You do throw on like if you get those like the time is now Mav shirts or like you know the, uh, the like the shirts that they give out. You'll just put those on right away. The ones that are sitting on your seat at a Mavs game. Yeah, because if you wash it, then it's gonna go to like a size small. <laughs> yeah, and, a, uh, shocker a, here. I don't wear from, small. Goes from an XL to a medium when you when yeah. you wash those. Ones. Not trying to be Ryan Rosillo. Uh, yeah. On today's show, like we said, we are going to answer your questions. We got some great ones on uh, this, this one. What's the worst record the Mavs can have next season and Jason Kidd still be the coach? That one was, is a fascinating one. We'll talk about the difference between uh, Jairus Walker and Taylor Hendricks. If they fall to 10, which one would you rather have? Uh, affordable $12 million free agents next season. And then let's start here, Isaac Harris. Oh, This one we got today. I don't know the name. Send your names when, when you subtext us names, when you subtext us questions. <laughs> <laughs> the question is, if you are Nico Harrison, okay, how would you try to explain to Luka Doncic about the path that you should take to win multiple championships with the Mavericks? So what would you tell him? What would you tell Luka Doncic? Uh, and then what do you think Luka's response was? Let's just start with what would you tell Luka if you're Nico Harrison? Great question, by the way, whoever you are. Yeah. Love, love questions like this of, hey, put yourself in their shoes. What would you do type of thing? Um, I probably went too far for this question. I was like really no, thinking No, go for it. it. I'm ready. Well, I'm flying over to Slovenia. You're first. not even washing this shirt. You're just putting it on. No, no, no. 
I'm flying over to Slovenia first. We're going to one of his favorite restaurants. Um, we're sitting down. And, I mean, heck, this is probably going to happen anyway. <laughs> and saying, yeah. hey, how's your off-season going? Tell me about life. What should I order? You know, what wine do you suggest? I did get a DM uh, recently. Some, <laughs> in, some inside sourcing that Luca has hired a nutritionist. Someone in Slovenia sent me a message that Luca has hired a We've reached the spot to where people are reaching out, reporting in on the, what not, he orders. He did not participate in the very unhealthy eating that the rest of the people around him was participating in. He was eating very healthy, what this person said. So I appreciate that inside info. All right. So we're talking about championships first. <laughs> one, of, one of the questions I wrote down is like, I want to know exactly what Luca wants. Yeah. And I know everybody's going to say he's a winner. He wants it. Like, what else do you want? Like, do you care? I mean, it, it feels like he doesn't care about the all time stats and playing as long as LeBron and all of that. Is it title or bust for him? Is it playing with some of his friends? Is it to make the most money possible? Um, what, what, where is, what's the priority list for him? Is it, Hey, I want to get a couple rings and I want to go, back to real madrid before i'm you know before i'm like i can't move like i want to go back there at a certain you know time of my career but for me i i'm sitting there pitching him saying i'm reminding him of the western conference finals how short of a time ago that was that that i am really leaning into this last year was this a bleep on the radar of hey we got Kyrie, we went a to blip? the western blip there you go <laughs> um <laughs> bleep it was a bad word <laughs> it was a uh, it was a that on radar it was yeah. um i'm it reminding him stain that's what, that's what it was i'm reminding him and i'm saying oh, we went to the western conference finals with a pre-arrived Jalen brunson you know not this like not the level that jb's at right now he's still really good but i'd say he's taking up a notch for the knicks definitely a pre-arrived Jalen brunson as your second best player on the team and Dwight Powell's our starting center that we didn't even have like an anchor. We didn't even have a big rebounder, protect the paint type of guy. And we still made it to the conference finals. Now we have a Kyrie Irving in that spot. Now we have a guy who's an all-star who is an all-star starter. Who's won a title. Who's played with LeBron. Give me a chance. Like give me a chance to build a roster around you two. Now you have the best player that you've played with since you've been in the league in Dallas. Give me a chance. You've seen what I've done with trades. You see that I don't care. I will swing for big trades and I, I will swing for the fences yeah. and, and try to add talent around you. Give me a, give me an off season to build around you and Kyrie. Let me get you some more wings and defense. And the, I guess one of the bigger things I'm telling him is this is the off season. We're investing into a big for you. Like, we we're not we're done playing the piece it together center spot. We're going to start training camp with a solidified center, a solidified big man who can defend the paint, protect the paint, who can rebound the basketball who can catch lobs with you a better version of Dwight Powell. That's my selling piece for him. That's a great place. Great place to be. If you're, you're Nico Harrison, a great spot to come from. I, I think you look at Luca and you say, you know, last year at the end of the season, it did not go like we thought, right? And you didn't, it didn't go well for you, didn't go well for us, didn't go well for us in general. And you're, you're pitching we over and over again. You're saying, okay, let's, let me bring back Kyrie. Let me make sure that we bring back Kyrie. That's my number one because you know, and I know that you guys can be special together. Think about that Philadelphia 76ers game where both of you guys put up 40. We went and, mm -hmm. and beat that team and we probably shouldn't have. Think about some of the things that you guys did together. Think about, how special it'll be to have a guy like that to be able to take over when you're not on the court. Okay, that's our foundation. And that's a better foundation than where they were when they had Luka and Brunson. Because as much as we want to say that, that Brunson was is the reason why they're in this situation, blah, 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 Brunson was not this player. Okay, like Brunson was, was getting there. And in the first two games against the Jazz in the playoffs, he, he rose to that level. But Brunson was not uh, Brun Brunson was not the, like an all-star player when he was with the Mavericks, uh, even in games when Luca was out. So you have that now. You have a guy that knows how to play off of a star, that knows how to uh, to like be an all-star starter and all that kind of stuff. He has that kind of talent. This is the most talent. This is the most talented player we've ever had with you. Now give it. Now, like you said, give give me a chance to build around you. Look at what the Lakers did. Look at what the Heat have done. Where we just need a chance. We just need a chance to get into some of these spots. Maybe we have to make 
one or two moves and we can be right back there because it doesn't take much in today's NBA if you have the foundation. And we believe that we have the foundation with you and you believe it with Kyrie because I've seen how you've responded to Kyrie and I've seen how you look at Kyrie and, and respect his game and I've seen what he can bring and all that stuff. Like I, th I think that's the pitch to him. And I think that I don't think he even gets into the like I know, I've know this, this question probably like one of the machinations of, okay, well, we're going to go get this player and this player and, and, and try to bring in this. Like I, you, he can walk him through all the different Goron steps. Goron is a free agent. <laughs> he can walk him through all the different steps and say, okay, we're going to go trade Tim Hardaway for Jared Allen. We're going to go sign Dylan Brooks. We're going to sign Matisse Teibel. We're going to sign uh, Dennis or Patrick Beverly to be a, you know, a guard defender off the bench. We're going to bring back Dwight on a minimum. We're going to, you know, he could, he could go through all that and say, okay, this is our plan for the off season. But I think just reaffirming with Luca that he believes that him and Kyrie can be the foundation of a championship team. And I think they, yeah. I think all, I think all both of them would, would agree with that. And that everything is at his disposable disposal to trade this summer, including the 10th pick of, yeah. Hey, we're not going into the draft. Just, just only looking at adding another young guy. It's going to take multiple years. We'll take them. If we feel like it's the best player that can help us now, but everything is open to trading this summer. Absolutely. So coming up, let's talk about some of those players that could be available for the Mavericks. Let's talk about some free agents, talk about some some picks and things like that the Mavericks could uh, look at. Talk about that coming up. But before we do, let me tell you about Bird Dogs. They sent us some Bird Dog shorts, and let me tell you, these are comfortable. They fit really well. I have a hard time finding things that fit really well because – um, I'm tall, but I'm also like kind of husky. So like to find something that fits well and also is like not feeling like I'm wearing Magic Johnson, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar shorts, like <laughs> when I'm trying to find something like that is tough sometimes. And these bird dogs are exactly that. They ask for your measurements. You put them in. They send them to you. They're very, very comfortable. Uh, so right now you can go get some bird dogs. Go to birddogs.com slash locked on NBA. When you enter the promo code locked on NBA, they'll throw in a free custom bird dogs, Yeti style tumbler with every order. So you can go get that. Uh, they have shorts there. They look good. Like Isaac said last time in a meeting, or if you're, uh, you know, just out on the town, you can wear them in a meeting. You can wear them hanging out. You can wear them at home, all that stuff. Check them out again. Birddogs.com slash locked on NBA. Use the promo code locked on NBA. Thanks, everybody, for hanging out with us on Lockdown Mavs, being part of the show, being an everydayer, a raccoon squad card-carrying member. One day I'll make cards. Uh, we're answering your questions on subtext. If you want to subscribe to our subtext, click the link in the description. Answering your questions. Another question we got are, which affordable free agents stand out to you as an impact player for the Mavericks to target this offseason? So the Mavericks will probably have the taxpayer mid-level because they're probably going to be another – they're probably going to be a taxpayer team. They're, if they yeah. cut bait with everybody, right – then they would have. There's a way that they they can get the MLE though. Which the difference the difference is trade. about five million, right? Because it's seven yeah. million for the taxpayer, and I think it's twelve million for the the actual mid level. So I think they're going to be a taxpayer. That's just me. But um, so is that who, after they bring back Christian Wood? They, that, is, that, is, <laughs> uh, that is not in their plans. I don't. I don't think. <laughs> Who are some players that, that stand out to you? To me, I mean, one of the first ones is is Dylan Brooks. I mean, he's he's the guy that I think I you know that I'm against this like for for this team, but I don't think this team will be against it. I think that that's a name that they'll look at, and if you give them the full, like you can split up this this taxpayer MLE by the way too. You can split up that seven million to a couple players, but I think if they give him the full thing, promise him that hey, we got a starting spot for you. You know, you you play with Luke, play off Luka Doncic, all that kind of stuff. Jason Kidd maybe a better fit as a coach for you than Taylor Jenkins was. He'll maybe be able to relate to you because he was a player and all that kind of stuff. We think we have the the infrastructure to be able to <laughs> to bring him in. That's probably what they say yeah. internally and all that. We have the veterans. Uh and yeah, I think that's that's probably the first name that you look at. Cause I, honestly like he's the most talented player they can get with that with that seven million because he's a you know he's not gonna cost as much. Yeah, let's just say we're working with one of the exceptions there. Cause I think a couple of my guys I'd probably put in the mle range but let's just say that seven to eleven range somewhere through yeah. there um I, I mean i had dylan brooks on my list i've been yeah. pretty open about it that there are scenarios in which i mean I, the best way i can say it is like i said before is i'm making a call to his agent i'm just not telling anybody like because it's kind of <laughs> embarrassing but um i'm at least well, you're gonna sign agent. him and, and then social post post about him on social media and you're gonna do all like you're gonna go do it so you might as well just do it <laughs> yeah if you're gonna do it do it 
But yeah, imagine I would. I would they, rather imagine cross. if they sign Dylan Brooks and Patrick Beverly. Like you bring those two guys in, like and talk trade about for a, Draymond. Talk about oh my god, talk <laughs> um, about a change in culture. I'm just not crossing that bridge with Dylan Brooks until we've like signed him, and then it's like, all right, I'll do it now. But Dylan no. Brooks already broke the bridge. <laughs> I'd be open to it. Um, I mean, the dude's gonna get more money now, but the stock on Rui Island, I I feel it's, like. Yeah, it's done. My apartment complexes that I've owned for a while, the prices are just <laughs> going up uh, during the playoffs. I have a question. What's going yeah. on in Washington that these guys just leave? Like did, like Spencer Dinwiddie leaves Ooh. and becomes this great player for the Mavericks. And uh, Rui Hachimura was being benched. He was like not playing for them at times. And now he's out there. Like he's Obvious, the key. Like, again. Can you he's please the... trade me? <laughs> so weird. Johnny Davis is going to turn into Jamal Murray then, somewhere else. And then the opposite, Porzingis goes there and like plays better. <laughs> yeah, that's true. What a weird spot. Uh, yeah, so I had Rui on this list. Coincidence, another guy in the in Nuggets Lakers game, but I had Bruce Brown on this list. Yeah, um, he's making more than the. That yeah, I really like those guys. So I mean, like if Dallas somehow pulled off the MLE and they have that full MLE thing, like if they could get a Bruce Brown or a Rui at that, a guy that you know, it's been making way more than that, that I'm so intrigued with like what his next contract will be is Vucevic of like, like what, what is his next contract? Right. Like yeah. what, like it would not shock me if it's like the dude saying, dude, I'm, I'm tired of playing for sucky teams. Like I'm just, I have a relationship with Luca. I'll take a pay cut and go be, you know, and go, go play with Luca down in Dallas. And whether I start or come off the bench, like, his fit makes. I know that it's probably a real possibility. But for a ch- for, for a cheap price, it, it's I know, not a perfect fit. No, his basketball fit actually makes no sense in the way that the Mavericks want to defend. First of all, they want to do this rotating, like switching, all this kind of stuff. Defense. He can't do that at all. And on offense, they want to space the floor. And he 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 can shoot like he, he can. can but but it's been a theoretic. He has not been like a really good shooter in his career, even though he has this like. He has his reputation as being a really good shooter. What's he, he's a career thirty four percent from three, uh, sniper. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Shot thirty one percent last year for Chicago. This past year thirty five percent. So, yeah, that's one for sure. But I, it, basketball wise, it just doesn't make any sense to me. My last one on this and list. If, if they brought in Christian, sorry, if they brought in Christian Wood, and then. We're like, all right, we're gonna bring in this guy, and he made more sense than Vucevic did. That's like basketball wise, and Vucevic is better than Christian Wood. Sure, but that oh, I'll, they brought in Javale McGee, right? Who was a better fit sure. and made more sense, and then didn't change what they wanted to do basketball wise, scheme wise for Javale McGee. Then I don't know what they do with Vooch. All right, my last one is tough for me to bring up because I think I actually like flamed him before on a previous pod, but I've. <laughs> I've warmed up to it now. Is Grant Williams? Oh, I thought it was gonna be campaign. Oh, no. I was so, I was so re- no. yeah. I have, I have Grant Williams' yeah. basketball reference page pulled up. No, no, no. Yeah, Ratatouille can stay in Phoenix. Grant Williams. <laughs> I am. I, I'm. I've warmed up to the idea. I, I was in the camp of like, what is he like? Is he good? What? What? I don't know what. But I think for what Dallas does, I think they could use a guy like him and. He's he'd annoying be, with teammates, though, it feels like. so. But anyway. He'd be awesome for me. I, I think that that's a perfect one. I think that's a real scenario because he's in and out of the lineup for the Celtics, and you'd think that a player like that would be able to play. He's yeah. won them playoff games in the past for hitting a ton of threes. He shoots really well from three. Like the last three years when he's actually played, he's shooting about 40% from three. And, uh, you know, 6'6", six, six, he's a little bit bigger. He, NBA he, PA guy. Like He slammed – JaVel McGee and just made him fall down like right there. That just terrible doesn't belong in basketball play. If you guys all saw that <laughs> got replayed over and over, just kidding. Do all flopped, but he, he's I'm warming he's up on, to the idea because I, I think I, he could be a math. Yeah, absolutely. I think, and I think he should, they should really go after Grant Williams. He's a restricted free agent. So that one is, that's interesting to try and figure out what, what they're going to do with him. Um, also, uh, another restricted free agent is Matisse Tybel. The Mavericks have been uh, attached to him in the past. I don't think he would get the full, like, $7, 12000000 million or something like that, but that's a guy I'm definitely looking at. They just need a defender off the bench, somebody he's not going to give you a ton offensively, but he's made an all-NBA team in the past. So if you bring in Dylan Brooks, you bring in Matisse Tybel, that's two all-NBA, like, all-defense you know, all type guys that have been on that team in the past. So 
That's, if that's what I'm if Boston with. called and said, "Hey, we would rather have a shooter there, like on the wing, instead of Grant Williams." <laughs> what if and, we What if we did Evan Fournier, but we got it right? <laughs> well, I mean, would you Would you be interested in a sign and trade Grant Williams for Tim Hardaway? How much am I signing Grant Williams for? Like fifteen. Ooh. Um. Wasn't there a report a while back saying he wanted like twenty? <laughs> I'm like, I mean, guys can right. want whatever they want. Yeah, but I'm, I'm saying like, I don't think he's going for seven. So what's the in between of twenty and seven? <laughs> <laughs> Comment below. What's the difference between twenty and seven? <laughs> yeah, uh, this is back in February. Grant Williams could seek twenty million. He's not playing for his team right now. He ain't getting twenty. He's not getting twenty. So yeah, if he can get twelve from the Mavericks or. He's not getting seven though. That's you're you're right about that. He's, he's yeah. he can go to like one of these other the Jazz he can or get the Pacers. The MLE for somebody, yeah. He'll go. He'll probably go to the Pacers. That that's he'll, they have more they have more cap to give. Rick would love him. Uh, absolutely. So uh, coming up, let's answer some more of your questions on uh, Jairus Walker and Taylor Hendricks, um, and others. We'll talk about that coming up. All right, Isaac Harris. Another question. We're answering your questions on subtext. This question comes in. If Jairus Walker and Taylor Hendricks were to fall to 10, would you rather have one of them on a deal averaging around 10 million a year for four to five years or trade back for more assets and a veteran? For me, it's still a trade back. Um, I think both those guys on, on paper would be good fits in Dallas. If Dallas took them at 10, it makes sense. Like you get all of it <laughs> having a defensive wing like that, especially somebody like Hendricks who can shoot the ball really well. But if it's still the number one scenario for me is to move back, still add a young guy to you know to the roster, but get a quality rotation piece in that. It's better said than um, easier said than done. I get it, but yeah. By the way, I want to correct this question. The question says ten million a year for four to five years because they think that's what the rookie. That's for the number one pick. <laughs> that's what the number one pick makes. A tenth pick makes about four million, four and a half the next year, four point seven in the third year. So. That's you're, you're talking less than half of what this person said. So, yeah, there is, there is a chance that there is a scenario where you look at it and say, well, we want somebody that's cost controlled because all of a sudden we're going to have to pay a lot for Luca and Kyrie together and then try and figure out something else. And if we make a trade and bring in somebody, then, you know, we'll, we'll need that salary. But, yeah, so they're, this, these players are not making a lot, which is the real benefit of having a rookie. But it's hard to find rookies that play yeah. in playoff series or play for teams that are, are really good. Uh, there's like one or two every draft. <laughs> there's one or two every draft, and you got to nail that player. And, and they, can, to, they can play and they can play right now, and that you hope can also keep playing because some of them they play right now, like a Landry Shamit, and then he kind of fades out on a different team. Yeah, and, and to go to full circle back to the very first question about the Nico pick and pitch to Luca. Some people have been on our comments and you know subtext and Twitter, and it's like. Guys, like, look at this roster. Like, we need to add another young guy to Josh Green and Jaden Hardy. And it's like, I get all of it. I get where you're coming from. I get the mindset of that. I'm like, because we love young players in the future and all of that. But how do you think that conversation's going between Nico and Luca over in Slovenia to where they're where Nico's looking at Luca saying, Hey, our best trade asset more than Josh and Jaden and any anything that we have, we're gonna use that on a young guy who man we hope he's in the rotation but it's probably going to be a few years but luca trust us all right in like two to three years i think he can be a good a good rotation piece and you know be playing you know who's not excited about that luca freaking Doncic. <laughs> <Me. laughs> <laughs> yeah but it's like so you know setting nico sitting across the table from luca saying hey so you know taylor, taylor hendrix is you know he's he's raw, but he's he's a lot of fun. He'll fit in a few years. Like Luca wants to win now, so that's what. Just keep that in mind whenever you're thinking about man. We got to. I think you could still get that young guy to add to some of these guys, but move back and do it. That's or get, I mean, undrafted guys. Like uh, there's a lot of undrafted players in the NBA. I mean, it doesn't all have to come through the draft. Mavericks have had a couple of them recently. Dorian Maxi. They've gotten undrafted. Or get into the second round. They don't care. I mean, they don't have you know future seconds to do that. But there's some guys that they've been working out that are projected second round picks or late first round picks that you know they could trade a contract or something and still get a flyer in here. Yeah, 
We are we're working on the like the the locked on NBA mock draft, and we'll talk about the the like the pick or the trades and things like that. We had a we had a trade for Tim Hardaway in the tenth and uh, Jared Allen, and that and that it was, was one. yeah we it had was that on the table and it was ready to be it was ready to go contingent on if a player dropped to ten that player didn't end up dropping to ten but and we thought the player would be there at ten but he wasn't and, and I so think the, the player t- will be at ten in the real t- <laughs> <laughs> yeah real, but but they need to do something like that right because Jared Allen is also he he's younger he's twenty five. He's cost controlled. Or, you know, oh, I would do 20, that deal in a heart. Making twenty million for the next couple of years, and like you, you have the contract, and that that fills just a hole that you've had for a long time. Like that is everything that that some of you wanted Moses Brown to be, Jared Allen. And you, oh you can, my gosh! If you can do that and get a guaranteed player like that, uh, I know that we've we've rang this bell so many times this week about how hey, they need to trade this pick. They ha- they should look into trading this pick. The, the odds that like some of these players will be good in the draft are not good. Like You have to really nail this pick, and it'd be awesome if they nailed it, got a Herb Jones, right? If you could get a Herb Jones at the 10, you know, something like yeah. that, that'd be awesome. But if you don't, you get somebody that's a zero. Remember Josh Green, year one. Some people were giving up on him. People are giving he, up on him now. Year two. <laughs> yeah, some people were giving up on him. And so it, it takes it may take a little while for some of these guys, especially since guys don't go through four years. For of most college. of these guys, it's gonna take a little bit. Because yeah. guys don't go through four years of college anymore and guys, you know, are coming from overseas and it takes a while to like transition and, and, and like adapt to the game. But if you could get a guy you know is good, like a guarantee a guarantee, and this this front office needs wins. Look through the comments of this YouTube video right now or on Twitter or whatever. They're playing, they're playing or think through money. your own thoughts about this front office. Like they, they need wins. And you can't just get you can't get wins if you're taking like a 30% chance on a player, right? They need guaranteed wins. Yeah. What's your uh, Jason uh, Kidd question? No, I gotta, oh yeah, let's hit that, Jason. Uh another question that came in on subtext. What is the worst record the team can have next season? And Jason Kidd can still be the coach. <laughs> This is a good question. I think the Mavs have to go to the, this doesn't really answer. They have to go to the second round. I think if they even make the playoffs and lose in the first round, he's fired. If they lose in the first round, I think if they lose in the first round, obviously if they don't make the playoffs or anything, he's fired for sure. Yeah. I think it's, it's contingent on you have to make the playoffs. You have to, yeah, you probably have to win a round and then like, (laughs) <laughs> it's interesting because do you do you consider the regular season like what if the regular season record is what if they're like a 500 team they make the pl- they make the play in like the, the heat of the lakers did this past year and then they yeah that's why i'm saying it's hard for me to put the record on this because here there's no going backwards this off season no matter what they do no. this summer it's going to no. be like win now Maybe type backwards, of moves. they keep their pick again <laughs> i know but i'm saying like no matter what they do this off season, it's going to be adding like to make a win now roster. So the expectations are going to, going to be there like next year. And you don't, and you don't, and if you're Jason Kidd, you don't get the benefit of, well, he took a team that didn't make the playoffs last year and made the playoffs this year. Like you don't get any bonus no. credit for that. It, it goes back to what we expected this team to be. Like he's, he's working from behind on this one. Yeah. So you got to make the second round. You got to be competitive in the second round for him to keep his job. We didn't get asked this. I was surprised, but what are your thoughts on, they still have an open assistant coach spot and there's tons of coaches out there now. Like so many, yeah. like Monty Williams is still out there. Bud's out, still out there. Nick nurse is taking, taking calls. Frank Vogel's taking calls. What are your thoughts on some of these guys? JJ Reddick's taking calls. JJ Reddick is taking calls. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, I, I think a lot of people are just seeing how, as the jobs continue to just open up, I, I mean, none of these four teams left in the playoffs. I think they're all four safe. Um, so, <laughs> uh, I guess Joe is safe. <laughs> Say, yeah. Um, but if the, if the town ever gets taken off of Netflix, then maybe he's not safe. <laughs> or where um, but but I think now that the dust is kind of settled, we see the main opener. We just got to see how that shakes out, and I think Dallas is interested. And probably, you know, a lot of these guys, but it's it's kind of like, you know, the report that came out about Frank Vogel. It's like, we both really like Frank Vogel. I think he'd be awesome 
uh, in that spot for Dallas alongside kid, but he wants a head coaching spot. Does that yeah. change if he doesn't get one of those? Does he is does he want to get back on the bench at all? Or is he still just going to wait it out and say, I'll just wait till the next round of openings, you know, come up. So who's, the, who's that guy going to be? Is it Monty? Is it, you know, somebody's not going to get one of those you know, jobs and be one of the odd man out. And then Dallas is probably gonna be like, so are you taking a year off or do you want to hop right back in? Right. So that's, that's just probably what they're waiting out. And yeah, we'll see it. Yeah. Like if, if Bud is waiting for, Popovich to just end his his time in San Antonio so he could take over that job. Maybe he just spent some time in Dallas. You're, just, you're right down the road. <laughs> yeah, no. I'm, I'm still yeah. looking at that because re I recently saw uh, Bobby Portis tweet like some people. He was tweeting about how there's so many bad G like GMs on this app on like, on, on Twitter, mm. and then he was responding to a couple other people, and they said, "Well, what was the biggest problem with your team? Like you lost in the first round this year." They said something to him. He said, "One thing that doesn't get talked about enough is Darvin Ham leaving." Uh, he was an assistant for the Bucks last year and then went to become the Lakers head coach. And I was like that coming from a player that's saying an assistant coach can have that big of an impact. Now, I don't think he was blaming all of it on losing Darvin Ham, but that yeah. an assistant coach can have a big enough impact that a, a player brings it up like this. I think this is a big opportunity for the Mavericks. And then somebody yeah. else, I said that on Twitter and somebody responded to me. Yeah. And the Mavericks usually blow those opportunities. Hey, well, <laughs> hmm. We gotta right, stay so, positive, guys. I mean, we did until the very end. Our pitches at the beginning were very positive. That's very true. Thanks everybody for hanging out with us. We'll be back. We're five days a week uh, talking about Dallas Mavericks. We'll be back on Monday talking about some of the teams uh, out there. We got all kinds of stuff on the tenth pick. Subscribe to our subtext, guys. Thanks. Draft for profile listening. starting next week. Oh yeah, we've got them. We've got them revving up, ready to go. Excited. And we'll have our draft profiles probably available on subtext too. So if you want, if you're interested in that. Mm. Guys, thanks so much for listening to Lockdown Maps. Peace out. Boom.